there are multiple ways to test the median nerve. In this particular instance, this is a very, very common setup that I have ready. This is a sensory signal that I'm going to record, stimulating the median nerve here at the wrist, sending a signal through the sensory nerve fibers to a recording electrode that I have up here on my index finger. When we send this signal through the nerve, we can then measure the sensory signal as it arrives at its destination, both in terms of its size and also in terms of how long it took to get the signal there. With nerves, the two most important things about them is the size of the signal and the speed at which it travels. So the amplitude of the signal and the latency of the signal, as in how long it took, are the most important things. If I take an electrical stimulator here and stimulate my median nerve at a set distance of 14 centimeters, which is a common distance used, and progressively stimulate the nerve, you will then see in the electrical recording that I've created a waveform on my screen. This is a sensory nerve action potential. That is the signal where it leaves here and reaches the electrodes in the finger. We record the signal at a couple of different points and you can see a mark, an X mark in red at the top of that waveform. There is a, a marker that you will see on my screen that says latency 3.5. That means it took 3.5 milliseconds for that signal to travel 14 centimetres from my wrist into my index finger. There is also a size of the signal there. It's in microvolts, it is 50. That is a very small signal in the sense that it is a millionth of a volt, a microvolt, but this is 50 microvolts. Anything above 12 in this situation is considered normal. So that signal, even though electrically very, very small, is technically normal for this nerve. The time it took the signal to get from my wrist to my finger, 3.5 milliseconds, was also normal. An identical study can be performed but instead sampling from the ulnar sensory nerve instead of the median. If we stimulate the ulnar nerve at the wrist, sending the signal up the nerve fibres to the electrodes that are now placed on the fifth finger, the ulnar nerve bypasses the carpal tunnel so if there was a problem affecting the median at the carpal tunnel, it does not affect the ulnar nerve. This allows us to then compare the two nerve fibres to each other. If I stimulate the ulnar nerve electrically at the wrist, and as I increase my signal, you will see an action potential occur. You can see the ulnar nerve signal on the screen is very similar in shape, very similar in size, and very similar in latency to the median nerve. These two nerves are essentially the same in terms of how they're conducting, even though the median nerve conducts through the carpal tunnel and the ulnar nerve does not. In this setting, this person does not have carpal tunnel delay.